everyone. Uh, today I will talk uh, about the CMOS MEMS accelerometer with embedded uh, MEMS capacitance and uh, inductors and uh, with uh, digital output in the form of frequency. And uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, I have a brief introduction and the design and the simulation of the device and uh, some fabrication and uh, some measurement of uh, this device. Uh, as, as you all know that there are different ways to read the uh, acceleration uh, information from these main devices. Uh, the capacitive uh, devices has the advantage of uh, CMOS compatibility and uh, high speed and uh, low power. But if you measure the capacitance change directly, uh, then you have to think of the uh, the influence of the circuit offset and the parasitics to the sensing circuit. And especially you have to try to uh, st stabilize the uh, uh, bias at the input node of the sensing circuit. But on the other hand, if you can convert the capacitance change into a frequency change, and then um, uh, you can not only uh, avoid these problems, but you can also uh, get uh, a digital form of output, which makes it easier to uh, integrate with other uh, digital signal processing uh, function blocks in your systems. So uh, in uh, this talk, we propose and demonstrate a uh, LC resonator-based uh, CMOS MEMS accelerometers, uh, which has a very high center frequencies, which transfers uh, to a very high sensitivities. And uh, we have on-chip integration of all the um, mechanical and uh, electronic uh, components. And uh, we also have this uh, digital output form. So the principle is very simple. Uh, this is a, a shuttle mass. And when it moves, uh, we have a differential capacitance. And uh, one goes up, and the other goes down. And uh, with this capacitance, we built a LC tank oscillators. Uh, so the one of the free oscillation frequency goes up, and then the other goes down. And then uh, we mix uh, these two frequencies, and then we get uh, a different uh, frequency output. And if you look at uh, the formulas, uh, the output frequency uh, has this uh, frequency bias. And, uh, we, but the really real signal is proportional to the change of the capacitance, uh, which is proportional to the uh, accelerations. And uh, this is the scaling factor or the sensitivities, which is, in general, uh, proportional to the oscillator center frequencies. And um, so uh, the design of this uh, part, why is the circuit part? Uh, this is uh, the output is the oscillator, mixed oscillator. And uh, this is the simulation of one of these uh, oscillators, which has a center frequency of about 2.2 gigahertz. And uh, the sensor part, uh, this is a moving part of the sensor. Uh, this is the uh, mass, and these are the screens, uh, which is very typical. And uh, in the moving mass, we have embedded a uh, MEMS inductors. And uh, together with the uh, cone drive fingers, it forms the LC of the LC tank oscillators. And uh, we have two of these. And uh, the design is such that when the uh, mass moves in this direction, uh, say C1 goes up and uh, then C2 will go down uh, with respect to the moving mass, which is not shown uh, on this uh, figure. And uh, the inductor is uh, on the top metal layer, uh, which uh, has an inductance of about the 4 nanohenry at the oscillation frequency. And the capacitor is made of a stack of all the metal layers. And uh, this is the overlap lens and uh, has a minimum uh, gap of 4 microns. And we calculate the uh, capacitance uh, to be about 256 femtofarad. And uh, uh, from the finite element simulations, uh, the uh, change of cap capacitance at 1G is about 8% uh, of the uh, original uh, capacitance. So uh, we also make sure that uh, the 
uh, fundamental mode is in the sensing axis around here. And uh, so uh, this is a processing of this device. Uh, we use TSMC 0 0.18 micron uh, 1P 6M CMOS process. And uh, after we get this from the chip, uh, there is a photo resist uh, photoisography to define uh, the, uh, the move, uh, move, move these structures. And then after this, uh, first uh, there is a uh, SiO2 dry edge. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be anisotropic SiO2 dry edge. And then there is a isotropic silicon edge to release the device. Uh, and this, this uh, process uh, is basically uh, offered by the CIC in Taiwan and uh, it, it, uh, according to these publications. Uh, so this is a fabrication device. This is a micro, uh, optical microscopic view. And you can see that this is a uh, master synthesis and another synthesis. This is the second oscillator. And the output of the oscillator of course is the picture of the field. Uh, say a counter to give us this. And this is the SDF units. You can see the uh, released uh, inductors and the moving mass. And the, this is a curled frame to try to reduce the offset of fingers after release. And these are the closer views of the fingers and uh, the springs. Uh, so when we get this released, then uh, we first measure the. Uh, Mechanical resonance, uh, the resonance frequency is about 3.3K, and the uh, quality factor is about 7. And uh, we also measure the oscillator output before mixing. Uh, uh, they are at uh, about 1.9 gigahertz, which is close to the simulation. And uh, so we, after we make this, we can measure the uh, uh, we, we, we can make the acceleration test uh, by taking the mixed signals to a counter and uh, get the, either the counts or the frequency of the, 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 the signals. And uh, this one is static measurement, so we mount the device on the turntable and then rotate that from uh, uh, 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So basically it is from, uh, say, plus 1G to minus 1G to plus 1G. And we can fit the measure the output frequency to these uh, model equations. So the k, the first term is uh, the bias frequency somewhere over here, and k1 is the uh, uh, scale factor or the sensitivity of the device. And these are some nonlinearity or uh, cross coupling or uh, angular mis uh, misalignment. So we can you can see this qu uh, fit quite nicely to this model. And uh, all the uh, this coefficient, non-ideal coefficients are relatively small compared to the uh, sensitivity factor. So this is a static uh, measurement, and we make then the dynamic measurement by uh, putting the se uh, sensor on the shaker. And uh, uh, this is uh, at for fixed uh, input frequency. Uh, we have different amplitude of uh, vibrations, and uh, we take the output frequency, and uh, you see they fit uh, very nicely to a straight line. And um, uh, from this data, uh, we can calculate the uh, nonlinearity, uh, which is uh, deviation from this straight line to be less than 1% for scale, and the sensitivity is uh, 4.0 megahertz per G. And, uh, also, because it's a dynamic measurement, we can take the time signal from the, the sensor. And uh, for example, this is uh, at uh, uh, this frequency for 1G peak-to-peak -peak input vibrations. And we can analyze this, uh, the, this uh, signal and the, from the spectrum this, with this signal, uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the resolution of our device, which is about uh, 260 micro G per square root hertz. So uh, uh, from this measurement, we can, uh, so this is a table uh, that compares our devices with some other devices. And these two uh, publications are earlier publications. They are made of uh, uh, mechanical resonators, uh, double-ended uh, tuning fork resonators. Uh, so because it's a mechanical resonance, a resonator, it has a lower resonance frequency, so the sensitivity is lower. 
Uh, this is a newer, more recent uh, publication. Uh, they use a bounding wire inductor with uh, on chip capacitors. Uh, but uh, probably because the, uh, the, the the inductance of the bound wire does not change uh, significantly, so they do not have a very large uh, sensitivity compared to ours. So, uh, so that's uh, the advantage of this uh, this device. So to conclude, uh, we have demonstrated a CMOS MEMS accelerometers with integrated uh, oscillators and the integrated uh, uh, capacitors and inductors. And uh, okay, this is made of uh, CMOS and uh, process, standard CMOS process and the dry HM post processing. And these are the performance uh, of these devices. Uh, the sensitivity is very large. Uh, we get a uh, four megahertz change of frequency per uh, G. And uh, uh, right now we are trying to uh, complete our measurement of the phase noise and also uh, try to improve the uh, resolution of this device. So that's uh, all about our device. Uh, thank you very much.